In this unit we're going to look at the use of the roof by footprint tool and how it can be used to form both flat roofs and sloped roofs. So I've created an external shell of a building here. If I just switch to a 3D view just to give you an idea. So that's what we're going to stick a roof on. So I'm going to switch to level one. Now my walls currently go up to level one so this is the view we need to be in to create our roof so if we switch to the architecture menu and on the build panel we have the roof tools there's a little drop down menu there got some different options here for creating roofs and accessories for roofs it's roof by footprint that we're going to look at in this unit so I select roof by footprint we immediately put into sketch mode green tick, red cross, draw palette. We have a look on the options bar. Just for now, I'm gonna turn off this parameter here, this toggle, define slope. I'm gonna discuss that in detail in a short while later on in the unit when we actually look at sloped roofs and we'll see exactly what this does and how you can control it. But for now, I'm just gonna turn that off this is a very similar process to creating floors and if you recall from the unit on floors Revit is now expecting us to define a boundary a footprint for our roof so I'm going to use the pick walls tool I'm going to hover over a wall remember that use of the tab key to find chains of walls now I can click to place the boundary lines so they're all in place the same set of rules apply in sketch mode here as they did with the floors remember I said it's got to be a closed loop no straggly bits of lines no lines that extend past others no gaps in the boundary so we have our footprint defined look over towards the properties palette the type selector Roofs are a system family in Revit, so we've got our family types here. So we've got basic roofs as a group and slope glazing. I'll pick that up at the end of this unit and we'll, we'll look at how that works. But for now I'm just going to stick with the roof type that was offered. It's going to be created at level 1. It's picked that up automatically because we're in level 1 floor plan and level 1 level is associated with this particular floor plan view so we can go ahead and hit the green tick and Revit creates our roof so if I switch to 3D there is our newly formed roof element just going to run a very quick section across this view switch to that section just open that up a little bit so our level one was here and that's why the walls stop where they do because they're constrained by that level and the roof and its build up start from that level so you might recall from the unit on floors floors actually were built up um, downwards from their associated level and I said at that time roofs work in the opposite way so whatever level they're associated from that coincides with the underside of the roof build up and it then builds up from there depending on the layers and their thicknesses that you stipulate So we've created a flat roof, now let's move on to a sloped roof and that's where that defined slope parameter comes into play. So for this example I've deleted the flat roof we've just created so we'll start again. I'm up at level 1 in the level 1 floor plan. So architecture, roof, make sure you're on roof by footprint. We're back in sketch mode, Revit's wanting the boundary of the footprint of the roof 
we turned that off previously let's turn that back on and we'll look at what happens when we put the boundary in now so for this I'm going to use the pick walls tool and I'm actually going to create an overhang to our roof so I'm going to set mine at 400 mil I'm going to hover over a wall and because I've got pick walls selected you can see Revit is detecting the wall elements notice the light blue dashed line which represents where the overhang is going to be just make sure you don't have it on the inside of the building so select one or hover over one then use the tab key to find the chain and now click to place the boundary now this looks slightly different than what we saw before in terms of the fact we've got these little triangles next to every section of boundary line now if I just take any of these boundary lines you can actually see each one has its own properties and parameters and if we look down here defines roof slope it's got a tick box that little symbol that triangle tells you that that parameter is turned on that this particular line is going to be part of a roof slope and that's how you manipulate the roof forms as you create them in Revit you basically tell Revit for each element of the boundary of your roof which part of it actually slopes and which doesn't so for now for this example to keep it simple I'm going to leave every part of the boundary with that toggle turned on so every element of the boundary line is set to define part of a roof slope apart from that it's the same process as for the flat roof so pick a roof type I'm going to just stick with that one for now it's going to be created at level one so I can go ahead and hit the green tick to form the roof. Revit immediately forms the roof. It looks a little bit strange here in the middle. What you're actually seeing is a hole in the roof and the roof layers. We talked about plan views being basically a camera that hovers at a certain height in the model and has a cut plane. Well, it just happens that the roof is being cut through here so we, the top middle section of the roof is actually above the cut plane hence we can't see it. But if we switch to a 3D view there's our finished roof. So let's say we want to form some gable ends to our roof. Let's go back to level one floor plan. Let's select the roof we've previously made. We've got a button up here on the ribbon, edit footprint. As we've seen before, that button takes us back into sketch mode where we can alter the position of these boundary lines but what we can also do is turn on or off some of these toggles here for defined slope so I want to create a gable end on this part of the roof so I select that portion of the boundary line turn off the defined roof slope toggle notice the little icon disappears I'll put another gable end on here so I'll turn that one off and finally do one down at the bottom there turn that off as well leave the rest of the boundary lines as they are hit the green tick to remake the roof and switch to a 3d view to see the completed roof form we're almost there the roof now has gable ends but the walls in those locations stop short very easy to rectify that if we select the wall in question we have an option with the wall selected to attach its top or its base to another object so select that and all I have to do now is pick the object that I want that wall to attach to obviously in this case it's the roof hover over the roof select it and the gable wall is completed. 
go around quickly and do the others. So again, select the wall, attach top and base. And that last one, select wall, attach top and base, select roof. If I just move this section line along the model, take a section through this part of the building and its roof, we take a look. Notice how the walls are horizontal at their top and they don't quite meet the roof correctly. The roof just sits balanced on that outer edge there. For the sake of tidying the model up, we'd probably want these walls just to continue up and meet this geometry. We can actually use the same technique that we've just looked at for creating the gable ends, i.e. if we select that wall, attach top and base, and now select the roof. Notice how Revit now tidies up the two pieces of geometry. If I switch back to a 3D view, and we look round, you can actually see, I zoom in, those parts of the model where the walls don't correctly meet the roof. So another reason why it's a good idea to go around and tidy those up. Thankfully, we can do all the walls in one go. We don't have to select each one. I'll show you how to do that now. So if I select everything in the model, use this filter tool to say I only want walls selected. So now I have every wall in the model selected. I can now use that attached top and base, select the roof and all those wall and roof junctions are tidied up in one go. If we select the roof we've just created, we'll see its properties over in the properties palette. So from here we can change it out to a different roof type. We can change its slope. So let's put 45 degrees in, hit apply, and the roof is adjusted accordingly. We can also create new roof types. So select the roof again, and this is very similar to the process, or in fact, it's identical to the process we've looked at in previous units with regard floors, ceilings, walls, for example. So choose a roof type that's similar to the one you need to create. Hit edit type. Remember, use that duplicate button. Give it a new name, whatever's meaningful to you. Hit OK. Hit edit structure. You should notice by now, every time we do this, all the dialog boxes, the panels are exactly the same regardless of the type of element. So you can see the underlying code in the software is exactly the same, it's just a different category of element. So edit structure, we saw this in the floors, even got the variable thickness options here. So this is where we would add layers in, take layers out, change materials, change thicknesses, construct the roof buildup that we need. Hit OK, hit OK again and now we've got our new roof type. Earlier in this unit we looked in the type selector and we saw that there were two groups basic roof and sloped glazing. Just quickly cover sloped glazing to finish off this unit. So if you've created a roof already and you want to swap it to that sloped glazing roof type just select the roof, type selector pick roof sloped glazing. What you get by doing so is essentially a blank piece of curtain wall. If you recall back from the unit on curtain walls when I built one up from scratch, these behave in exactly the same way. In essence these are curtain walls. So if you recall from that unit, 
we applied curtain grids so if I hit curtain grid hover over the edge I can now start subdividing this roof glazing into separate curtain panels if I go to architecture remember mullions once you've got curtain grids on there you can apply mullions to them on a grid line or all grid lines hover over your roof section and your mullions will be hosted onto those grid lines so a really useful tool obviously conservatory roofs or feature roof lights can all be done with the sloped glazing roof type and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.